It came out in 2020, which I could have sworn it came out in 2021. So, no, nope, that makes sense now because it was last Christmas. <laughs> I was just tripping. Okay. <laughs> anyway, we're on previous. Life. We're high on life right now. Yeah, high on life. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our podcast. My name is Hannah. And I'm Rachel. And this is the You Talking to Me podcast. Today, 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 we are talking about the movie Happiest Season, which is a Hulu original. I almost said Netflix, but it's not a Netflix original, people. It's Hulu. Okay, here's the recap. (laughs) Happiest Season is a Christmas movie. We follow the lives of Abby and Harper, who are dating. Harper is bringing Abby home for Christmas, but she hasn't come out to her family, so they are going to be living with their secret for five days. Abby finds out that it doesn't feel good to be hidden, and Harper struggles to be someone she isn't. After a huge family fight, will everyone be able to accept the truth that have come out, or will the truth be too much to handle? You'll find out. Because so we'll movie. spoil it for you. Yeah. I've seen this movie once, and I will be honest that I really didn't like it the first time I watched it because I thought there were a lot of things that just were like too stupid because it's bordering a comedy and a drama. But like, they're, it's really riding the line because you'll think it's a drama for a long section. You saw Hannah like spider monkey crawl back into the chair just now. Um, If you're watching the YouTube channel, which you should, because like I've said many times, I have a closed spreadsheet and I do this for you. I do this for you. Anyway, it, at times it'll be such a hardcore drama and you'll like be feeling for these people, which that was the times that I liked it the most was when it was a drama. And then it'll show up. Mr. Uh, John is the best friend. He's one of the, he's like the main kid, like child, like the son in Schitt's Creek. What's his name again? Eugene Levy, or is it something else? Dan Levy? Dan Levy or Levy. I don't know how you pronounce his name. Anyway. Isn't he the one who spoke at your graduation? You should know this. Come on. We love your work. You're (laughs) amazing, Mr. Levy. I'll say we liked you in this movie much more than in Schitt's Creek. Okay, thank you. I would, ag- I would agree with that, but I also thought it was like so out there. Like yeah. his character forced, like was right? too much. Yeah. Like I wanted him to just be like half as crazy. Like it, it, he was just like too loud and too, I don't know. It just didn't fit with the feelings of the movie, the way that he was acting it. The stuff he was saying, fine, but the w- like, the way he was acting, it just felt like he was acting, whereas a lot of the other characters didn't. Another time that it felt like people were acting was the mall cops. Yes, like they were funny or could have been funny, but like I knew they were like we're comedians, you know. Yeah. So, so that was for my- people who haven't watched it, the mall cops. There's a scene where Harper gets caught um what yeah. appears to be her shoplifting but what actually happens is um harper's niece's niece and nephew have put a necklace or something inside of abby's bag and the metal detector is going off and they're like ma'am stop ma'am stop and so they bring abby down into like an interrogation room and they're trying to get her to admit to stealing this thing And she's like, aren't there security cameras? And they're like, are you trying to do our job for us? And yeah, it was, that part was very forced acting. For me, I rated this six and a half out of 10, which might be generous. Um, I, you know, maybe a year ago would have had a different opinion and would have voted it higher. And I'd been like, oh, but it's LGBTQ plus. So let's rate it higher because of that. But you can't rate something higher just because you like, something like that and uh, like you said there were definitely parts that felt so 
forced for the acting. I didn't think the acting really got good until after Abby came out, which is like 10 minutes from the end of the movie. So. (laughs) Oh my God. I mean, after Harper came out, sorry. Harper said that she was dating Abby. Yeah. That's when I thought the acting got better. That's funny. You know who I loved the whole time though? Who? Jane. I don't. Uh, Here's why I love Jane though, is because so Jane is one of the sisters I think she's the middle sister and because Harper I think is the youngest from what I recall and so Jane is just a little weird she is loud doesn't have really that much sense of personal space like she just is like very different from this very posh rich family I like Jane because Jane is just being herself and everyone is like being mean around her and it like doesn't make any sense half the time like why why they're being mean with based on what she's doing look if she's hugging you too long absolutely be like look I think you're being a little too much right now but like her talking about her book look I understand if you're annoyed by it but like she's doing something she loves she's writing this like crazy sci-fi star wars type book okay and would i want to hear about it probably not because i'm not interested in sci-fi but if you want us to watch sci-fi movies one month we will do it pinky promise but like she's just being herself and she, she like for the white elephant at the end she paints this beautiful huge painting that took a hundred hours and the woman who opens it like is so not impressed by it like she doesn't like say it's ugly and think she's like what is this or whatever like she just like doesn't think it's good it's literally beautiful it's like a painting of the main street in their town that they live in and it's gorgeous and then they end up destroying it later which really made me so sad but I think I just like felt so bad for Jane that I felt for her the whole time and that's why I liked her the most I wouldn't say her acting was great but I think she was not overacting whereas I thought some of the other comedic characters were so I'll give it I thought she was overacting sometimes but at the end I liked the way she was acting again because most of the time it just felt like she was acting like a six-year-old to me but you know that's fine six-year-old at heart yeah (laughs) isn't that when they gave up on her so maybe she just never grew up past then uh at preschool when she was biting people on the playground they gave (laughs) up on her they're like we're done there's a whole array of things that happen in this movie so first it starts off with harper and abby they're going to look at christmas related stuff it's like they're on a christmas tour or something and Harper loves Christmas and she's trying to have Abby like Christmas and we find out later when Abby's talking to her best friend John that the reason she doesn't really like Christmas as much now is because her parents loved it so much but her parents are dead so (laughs) it just like doesn't seem the same I'm so sorry for laughing when she said her parents are dead it's just real quick it's like this really funny thing at the beginning when they're introducing Abby to everybody they're like, oh, and this is Harper's orphan. <laughs> and it's like, they died 10 years ago. I never lived in an orphanage, you know? Oh, they didn't just die. Like, I'm fine. It's hilarious. Anyway. And then Harper's like, oh, come home for Christmas. But then Abby decides she actually will. And Harper's like, oh my God. Cause she knows that she hasn't come out to her family. And like, this is weird. So on the drive there, then she's like, oh, I haven't told my family. So they don't know about you. And we have just found out that Abby was planning to propose to Harper on New Year's Eve, I believe. And then now they have to go and pretend that they're just roommates. And like, you can see the older sisters putting it together because she's like, you moved into Harper's one bedroom apartment. And Abby's like, oh, I'm sleeping in the pantry. We converted it (laughs) or something, you know. And Harper just keeps going off with her dad because her dad's trying to be mayor. And she's trying to be like the perfect daughter for him. And obviously that's not going to work. And they're in separate rooms because Harper's in her room and Abby's way down in the basement in Jane's old room. 
And then Harper goes to Abby's room, which this part's funny because Abby was trying to sneak up to Harper's room and then the mom's coming down the stairs and she ends up going in the pantry or closet in the hallway. And then she accidentally steps on a Roomba and starts moving around. And then the mom opens the door and she's like, Abby, what are you doing? She's like, oh, I must have been sleepwalking. And she's like, oh, can you get back down to your room? Okay. And she's like, yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. And by the time she gets down there, Harper's in her room and they spend the night together. That was funny because the next morning the mom's coming in and then Harper's hiding behind because the the room also has like a bunch of like storage boxes and stuff in it. So that's why she's trying to get in and there's no lock. So there was something pressed up against the door, thankfully, but mm. Yeah, and the mom's like, there's something in front of your door. And then Abby's like, oh, yeah, it's because I didn't want to sleepwalk again. And she's like, oh, okay. She's like, I'm looking for someone's old Game Boy for the niece and nephew. And then one of them is like looking over in the crack of the door and they can see that Harper's hiding behind it. <laughs> and they confront Abby about it when they're shopping. And she's like, oh, yeah, we were playing hide and seek. <laughs> Another big plot that's happening throughout this is not only is Harper helping with the campaign, which is drawing her away from Abby and spending time with Abby, but Harper's ex-boyfriend is in town and still single and her parents are trying, mostly her mom, is trying to set them up together and Connor's still interested. Connor's the ex-boyfriend. And that is, it's funny that they go with that because Harper's ex-girlfriend is also in town Riley and you think that's gonna be the issue and the jealousy and all of that when really it's Connor because Connor is representing Harper's the way Harper is when she's with her family and so Riley and Abby connect a lot because they understand each other with the whole being hidden or you know things like that and her being different when she's with you know, her parents and when she's with them and things. And we are kind of with Abby. We don't understand, you know, where the bad blood is with Riley and stuff. We just know that they dated in high school and had to break up or whatever. But we find out that Harper did Riley dirty. And they used to leave each other cute notes in each other's lockers freshman year. And one of Harper's friends found one of the ones that Riley left and was like what is this or whatever and Harper basically said oh my gosh like she's obsessed with me and like has this huge crush on me and like one outs her which is super rude and two like basically makes her seem crazy ostracizes her makes her you know seem like kind of predatory of being like she's obsessed with me and like won't leave me alone like that's already like a big no-no like in the LGBTQ community of people being like, I don't want trans women in my bathroom because they're gonna touch my kids. What? Stop being crazy. Also, why is your kid in the bathroom by themselves anyway? But whatever, that's beside the point. So there's like all of this drama and Abby's like, ooh, that is not the Harper I know. And she did not, like there's already at the beginning at dinner, she's like, oh, you didn't tell me that, like, you know, this stuff about you and Connor. And she's like, it's okay. I'm so sorry. All this stuff because they had gone on vacation together, apparently Harper and Connor and their families. And Abby literally goes, you know, you can tell me anything. And then we find out that she didn't disclose everything about the Riley situation. I'm like, oh, it was so much drama. I was like, ah, but I liked that they went with Abby and Riley connecting instead of Abby being jealous of Riley like I liked that kind of twist of where you think it's going to go of where the where the drama is going to spew from yeah I like that too and if it wasn't clear so when they get there the first night the family goes out to a family dinner and the mom surprises everyone with Connor being there and then (laughs) Abby has to sit in like this tiny chair at the table which was that part was funny okay that was one part that was funny but then yes at, or Riley comes around and Abby actually goes to a bar with Riley as this fun gay bar 
and they're walking around doing stuff and Harper's running errands with Jane. They're getting wine or something. And she looks out the window and she sees Abby with Riley. So there is still jealousy with Riley, but you're going to think that it'd be Abby being jealous of Riley, but it's Harper being jealous of Abby with Riley because they're walking around and she's like seeing them and she's like, oh my God, like what's happening? And, you know, you get whiplash kind of from Harper because she goes from saying like, oh, you know, the hardest, the truth is right now, it's just really hard not being able to kiss you at dinner. And then she goes and like around her family it's basically like she's ignoring Abby like who are you I don't know you like you're just my roommate you know it's it's whatever I feel so bad for Abby because that has to be so hard and obviously it's hard for Harper too because if you can't be true to who you are in front of the people you love like she's genuinely terrified that if she comes out her whole family will not love her or like even acknowledge that she's in the family anymore and that's scary. Yeah, all the sisters, I guess, kind of feel that. Jane less so because they kind of mentioned like she's just kind of given up on that because they've given up on her so long ago, like we said, when she was in preschool. And Sloan is the oldest sister and she is married to Eric, has the two kids. And it's almost as if she's looking for something to like, grab Harper on because we see at the beginning the dad's like oh Harper bring your a game tonight you know when we're meeting with the campaign manager or the constituents or whatever and Sloan's literally like do I need to bring anything dad and he's like no no you you, you, just just your wonderful family you guys are great and like like isn't making you know Harper obviously seems like the favorite and you can see it just like slowly picking at her and picking at her, you know, oh, bring your family. Oh, make sure your family's there. All this stuff. Well, we find out at the Christmas, you know, party with the white elephant and stuff like that, that uh, she and Eric are having a little marital issue. Uh, they're actually going to be getting divorced because they catch Eric sleeping with somebody in the closet because <laughs> they come falling hey, out. I think they were making out, but come on. Oh. They were probably doing something in there. They were maybe uh, pulling a friend's moment where Monica and Chandler were trying to make a baby in the closet at the hospital because they were ovulating. (laughs) But they were they were getting it on, doing something in there. And Sloan was literally like, "This was the moment right after Sloan found out that Abby and Harper were dating." Because Abby literally was so mad. John had come to pick her up from the party. And they saw Harper and Connor talking to each other, chatting it up, being real close. She's like, just keeps getting more and more upset. So she walks over and just says, Harper, you know, it's over. We're done. And walks downstairs. Harper follows her. They're having some sort of moment. I don't know. They're like in each other's arms or doing something. Yeah, because Sloan Harper walks. said, explains like, mm-hmm. I think I'll lose my whole family. Like you don't understand if I come out to them, like, they won't love me anymore. They don't care. Like I won't be perfect. I won't live up to their image and I don't want to lose you. And I don't want to lose them. And then Abby's like, you won't lose me. You won't lose me. And they're hugging. They're like about to kiss. And then Sloan barges in. Which I'm sorry, but it, I don't think Harper was saying these things to like, I don't know. It just seemed so not manipulative, but like, I don't think she was being malicious by saying these things, but it's like, she knew the right things to say at the right time so that Abby wouldn't leave her. And I was like, okay, now you pulling out the tears. Now you're like being this way to her. Like, where was this days ago when you knew she was upset? Like you could see it. Like if you can't see it, like you're not looking for it. And I don't, I think she wasn't looking for it because she was trying so hard to impress her family. And it's like, then why did you invite her in the first place? I know it was because you were having a good time, but it's like, ugh. But anyway, Sloan catches them, is literally going to go tell mom and dad, like a little snitch, like, come on. And which is also bad because she's going to be outing her without her permission or it feeling like the right time for Harper. So that's when they catch Eric in the closet with one of the campaign people or something like that. <laughs> this whole fight ensues and 
But when Sloan outs Harper, Harper just digs deep and denies it. Like, like this was her moment to just be like, yeah, I am. And I love having, like, it could have been like, and I know that's not super realistic or anything, but it's like, the hurt was so palpable. Like I hurt listening to her deny it. And I'm not in this relationship. Like it was so painful to watch. I think the best thing too, was that they made sure to have Riley like anticipating or just like waiting to see how Harper would react just to see, you know, you it's almost like she's just as invested in what's going to happen as Abby is because she knows and she wants for Abby, for Harper to be like, yeah. yes, I am gay, actually. She wants and, it to be different, even though it's not for her, which is yeah. such a good and mature person. Like, I don't know if I could ever be that mature. I don't know. Yeah. Rewrite history. And then um she's like I'm not a lesbian and then so Abby leaves and John's like trying to explain to her but you have to understand like when you came out your family was like we love you and we accept you just as you are and my dad kicked me out and he didn't talk to me again for 13 years he's like that's just the reality for some people and I get both sides because I understand if you're trying to hide or whatever but at the same time if you're with someone and you're like acting all out and like you're gonna bring them home for Christmas at least (laughs) tell them the whole before and it cannot be easy being with someone that's in the closet I guess a person I talked to when I was like 20 years old she was not out yet to her family and I just remember like she wanted me to come over to her house to meet her parents. And I was like, I'm meeting your parents under the guise of being your friend though. Like, and it was weird because I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, yes, I'm so excited to meet your parents, but then we're just like, oh, hi, we're friends. How are you? You know, it was so weird. So I do see it from both sides. Well, because- and the thing is, is that there wasn't like a choice for Abby. Like True. they're almost there and Harper is like being quiet, being distant and is like, uh, remember when I said I came out last summer and they took it really well? Well, none of that happened. Like I didn't even come out and they're already almost there. So now Abby doesn't have a choice, but to just go along with the plan, which that's the part that really bothered me. Like tell her ahead of time. So she can decide, do you want to come for Christmas? You would have to pretend to be my roommate because I'm not out yet. Like communication is key people. (laughs) Like that's all it took to fix this whole thing, honestly. But then we wouldn't have a movie or lessons anyway. But like giving the choice sometimes is enough. Even if you're with someone who isn't out, I feel like, you know what I mean? Like having that choice is so key in that situation from my, like watching it from the outside here. And that was the biggest thing was just forcing Abby back in the closet because Abby couldn't even say that she was gay. You know what I mean? Even if they were just roommates, you know? And so that was also tough on them as like people, both of them, you know? So that was, that was where a big issue, I think, started the lack of choice. Yeah. And like earlier in the film, we hear one or both of Harper's parents discussing Riley and her quote-unquote life choices like how she's choosing to live like they're saying that she has a choice in who she loves and they're like oh can you believe that like oh they must her parents must be embarrassed or whatever and then finally Abby was like I'm done I'm leaving this is done And Harper just like breaks down and she comes out and she's like, I am gay. I am gay and I love Abby and we're in a relationship. And then Abby still goes, she's like, it's too late. I'm leaving. And Harper's just crying because she just had her heart broken. And then the dad is mad because he finds out one of his kids is gay. One of them's getting divorced. Jane just wants to be a part of it so I don't remember what she she's like I'm an ally (laughs) yeah she's like I don't have a secret but I am an ally it's like sister power loving it that was so funny 
And the dad goes to the office and the most real scene, the scene I appreciate the most is the mom going to the dad's office and talking to him. And it's like, okay, guess what? We've tried to put up this image for how long it's not working. We thought we were perfect because we might look perfect from the outside, which in my mind is making me think of social media. A lot of people's lives look so perfect, but if you're like actually in them, it's not. And she's like, you know, we have one daughter who is terrified of telling us that she's been in an unhappy marriage. She d- is getting out of it, but like thought she couldn't for a while because of how we would react. We have another daughter who just had her heart broken because she was too scared to tell us who she really is. And she does mention something about Jane, but I don't remember. It's the giving up. On- Jane doesn't care because we've given up on her in preschool when she wouldn't stop biting people. Right. And she's like, guess what? I've put up this perfect image of myself too, but sometimes I want to try karate, even though it's not poised, but I think it'd be fun. And she said she wants to try something else too. And then eventually the dad does come around and things change, which this is a true story for some families. And for some, it's not. Some parents will never, ever come around. There's some extended family members who will never come around. They will never understand someone being gay or getting a divorce you know there's multiple different things and that is a reality that that happens sometimes but it's like so stupid and annoying like get over yourself to love your people I suppose when my mom was getting divorced with her first husband some of her family her own family was like not into it because divorce is bad which I know I grew up in a different time but like Jesus like get out of a relationship if you're one just unhappy two if it's abusive you should get out if it's mentally straining get out if they're mean to you get out like why are people why would you rather like this is very real in some people's situations they would rather apparently have their child or their grandchild their niece or nephew be beat up than have the scandal of getting divorced it's like Okay, how about you come in then and I want you to watch it then. Watch them get beat up and tell me that you don't want them to leave. It's like- Why don't you take a few of the punches? Yeah, it's so ridiculous that that definitely happens in some people's households of them not wanting you to get a divorce. when Or the verbal abuse. Or the verbal abuse. Oh my gosh, being, being literally like just so manipulative, so toxic, so horrible. It doesn't make sense to me. I understand that I am 25 and living in a world that is much more accepting of a lot of things and has laws that help protect some of these things or make some of these things possible. But geez, I just literally can't imagine. I can't fathom some of this stuff. I can't even see it on the other side at times. I understand there are religions that don't want you to get divorced. But you know what? They have things like annulments to like for a reason. There are things for reasons, people. And you know what? If God really wanted you to be in that relationship and not get divorced, then God is being a really bad guy right now. And I do not believe that God would ever do that. You know what I mean? Like, I know everything happens for a reason, but the de- if God exists, the devil also exists and the devil is controlling some people too. You know what I mean? Like if you're going to look at it from a religious reasons and stuff like that, you have to understand that God wouldn't put you in that bad of a situation. I cannot believe that. So, so this whole time there's been this um, sort of bit that has been in the movie where John tracks people's phones so he knows where they're at. And that's how he comes and is going to get Abby because Abby had called him and was like, um, it's literally a thousand dollars if I want to get a ride home. Like, I can't do that. And so he has shown up and then they're leaving. This was after the Harper comes out and Abby's like, you know, it's just too late. It's too late. And so they're leaving. They're at a gas station and Harper shows up and Abby's like, how'd you find me? She's like, I learned from John how to track you. And then they talk and they make up and she's like, please, I just like love you. Like, I need you. I don't care about my family. I need you. I need you. And so then they get back together and then it's like, everything's all PG keen. It goes to one year later and 
they're all celebrating Christmas together. And why was John just automatically included in Christmas? So John is the literary agent for Jane and her new book. Oh, and that's think, what was happening. Yeah. And so he's there. He's also like their best friend now. I mean, like it is, uh, he doesn't, I mean, his father still might not talk to him. So he might not have a place to go for Christmas, you know? So they, they love, as they said, the movie taking in, you know, people of need. So, <laughs> which was so funny. It's like, I'm 29 my parents died when I was 19 like I never lived in an orphanage I I am fine like happened 10 years ago I mean it obviously will always affect you but like you're not sitting there like as if it's fresh you know she isn't at least so um but yeah Jane's book that she's been talking about people were trashing the whole time is huge now and like making tons of money like which I was like yes I needed Jane to have a happy ending because I love Jane. I can't help it. I just love her. She's so weird and I love it. John was the literary agent for her, which I loved as well because she was on that Christmas where all the shit went down. She was telling him about the book and I forgot that he was a literary agent at the time, but then when the year later and he's sitting next to her at the booth of like the book signing or whatever, I was like, I forgot, but I remember now because he says it at the beginning, like when Abby is trying to get him to watch all those pets because she usually just pet sits over the holiday um, because she doesn't have Christmas. She's like, can you, are you sure you can handle it? And he's like, if I can handle all these people's, you know, books and their, you know, promotions and blah, 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 I can handle a couple of dogs and some fish or whatever, which he killed the fish. So, (laughs) which was hilarious. He was acting it so poorly, but the situation was funny when I'm thinking about it. So we see that Jane's book is being published. We see that Sloan and her ex-husband are still friends for their kids but they seem so much happier and we see that Abby and Harper can be themselves around Harper's family and we also see the engagement ring because they're engaged did you see so it's through an Instagram feed which is hilarious because the whole time the mom is like I'm engaged for the for the thing and she's taking all the pictures on an iPad like it's the little things that were funnier than like the big things they thought were funny but at the end, when the credits are rolling, you see like the Instagram feed, like rolling through. Did you see when they got engaged? Yeah, it was like October. It didn't, yeah, it didn't add up. I know some of the dates didn't make sense. I mean, it makes sense for them to have waited longer now because they're dealing with like, okay, who is, I understand like she wanted to propose on New Year's slash Christmas slash whatever. But after this whole debacle, I'd be like, okay, let's wait and see. You know what I mean? Like, let's just make sure it's going to work now that you're out and stuff like that. Because, you know, Harper is being a different person, you know, so I can understand the waiting, but it was weird because also the Christmas. But wasn't it period- October, 2020? That was the other thing. I swear that date had a 2020. Everyone else was a 2021. Mm, I swear I that I one was remember. 2020. I didn't remember the year, but it could have definitely been that but also the Christmas picture that came after it because your Instagram feed is in order and it was going in order of like earliest to latest, you know, yeah, it wasn't like went a, normal- to a pride festival and that was a correct date. It was in June. Like that makes sense. It was but 2021. Also, like the Christmas photo was the photo that they took the year before because yep. they, unless they're all wearing the same outfit again, which is weird. And then it was which, the wrong- That would be funny though. Like they, they, like they said Merry Christmas or something, but it was like, it was it was in the middle of either November or December. It wasn't, I think it Christmas. was in December, but I didn't see the date. I just, I just, I did see it's December like, cause I was trying to look, but it, it went, I was, it was on like my phone. 14th or something. So that was different too. And it didn't say like maybe throwback. it was from last year. Maybe it was like a throwback. So last but year's it, picture, that's why it's in the middle of December. I feel like she would at least have learned throwback Thursday, which is very old. Like that would have been really funny. Cause no one does throwback Thursday anymore on Instagram. Like that's like a very. 2014 thing to do and that would have been very funny for her to do it but they didn't even do that they didn't even like pull on that for her to just be like really behind the times but I did like that it was an Instagram feed she did also start karate did you say that well she did because that was one thing that she said she had always wanted to do and she had made it to a yellow belt which if I remember correctly is the second belt like you get a white belt you have to buy it and then after you train I think it's yellow I was in taekwondo for a little bit of time 
but I can't um, The dad also wins mayor even without that campaign manager lady because she calls, she's the audacity to be like, as long as the family, like, you know, they can live separately on their own time, but, you know, for publicity to, together. After she was literally making out with the husband, like, bro. And then also, like, if Harper She doesn't want the, Abby being gay. I mean, Harper yeah. being gay to be out. She's like, have a don't ask, don't tell policy. Yeah, and we don't see how the conversation goes after that, like, what the dad says. But the dad comes out and says, like, oh, you know, it's not going to work out. Like, he doesn't even, like, explain why or make it a big thing of, like, a, look what I did. Like, it just... I don't know she didn't want me or whatever which I was like go dad go dad rock on dad proud of you making the little steps that have the biggest impact you know what has he been in before let me look it up and and what has Riley been in because I recognize both their faces oh Aubrey Plaza yeah she's in like um Parks and Rec she's my microphone is still down <laughs> she's in this really dumb movie jack and i watched that was so bad but she is like kind of an snl person too that's like, what i thought that crowd let me look up the dad i do not i didn't really recognize him i feel like i've seen him and i did not feel like he was the right choice for that role i don't know i feel like we're just bashing this movie it was a fine movie okay i don't know if i would ever watch it again yeah, it wasn't my favorite. Um, he was in Titanic, Legally Blonde, Annie, nineteen ninety nine, Argo, Tuck Everlasting, Justice, Milk, The Last Templar. He's in a lot of random things. Yeah, I've just seen his face before, and the I don't lady? know. Like usually, I like Kristen Stewart's acting better too, and I felt like in this movie. It was oh, off. she had no charm in it. Like, yeah. There's like no personality, which I know is like kind of her thing, which is like sometimes appealing in the movie that you're in, but like, uh, did not make sense for a lot of it. It's like, why? Um, the lady that plays Harper reminded me so much of Joan Cusack, who's the principal in the School of Rock. The way she like her mouth moved and stuff. Oh my gosh, people tell me that you remember who that is. Uh, speaking of her, the entire time I was so distracted by her hair. I don't know if it was a wig, but that hair color and that hairstyle did not suit her face or her personality. It was not it the Maybe it was whole the time. Bang. That's all I was thinking. I was like, this does not look like your hair. And it made me think of, I watched the morning show and Reese Witherspoon is in there and the first season she must have a wig on maybe they dyed her hair I don't know but the whole first season I could barely pay attention to anything other than Cooper Bradley's hair which is her character and I was like this is a wig or something it looks bad it doesn't look like your hair I'm gonna look up this actress now because I need to see what color her hair naturally is and if she normally looks like that because it must have been a wig it was literally so distracting. That's all I could think about. I feel like I didn't think it looked like a wig, but maybe the bangs were just like really screwing it up for you. Yeah, it was just not not good. I and like hair. I don't know. I like Kristen Stewart's been... hair. Me too. I like that she was telling John like, oh yeah, um, I have to pretend I'm straight too. And he's like, have they ever seen a lesbian? <laughs> and then he comes in and he's like saying that he's um abby's straight heterosexual boyfriend (laughs) oh interesting she's a canadian actress and i recognize her from so she was in terminator her hair she looks better as a blonde okay like even if she has bangs still but is blonde which I get that that's hard to see. It won't focus, but the one on the right, uh, um, the left. I don't know. Is the one? I don't know which direction it is too. Sitting down is her. I do not like that hair color on her. Uh, I think it's better than the brown. See, like, like this blonde is definitely better on her. She's a blonde. Yeah, she looks good blonde, but I don't know if she wore a wig. 
but then it's like this is i've seen her with this hair this is when she was in terminator that's hilarious so maybe her hair was growing out from this movie when they were filming and so maybe it was a wig because it could have been an awkward length because that came out in 2019 and if um happiest season came out in 2020 i i I would bet you she was wearing a wig that's so funny i I didn't i would not have guessed that at all yep really i think so there it says there's only one wig in this movie which belongs to davis who who had a vastly superior lesbian wig (laughs) what who's writing this article wig work don't know if it's accurate but i she did wear a wig i'm getting all these things why did she wear a wig why did she wear a wig that's so funny i literally would have put money on her not have worn a wig Mm, that's so funny like the second i saw i was like that's a wig that is not hair anyway now that we've talked about this wig for 18 minutes straight um do you have anything else that you want to add to this Mm -mm. no i do not so i will run through social media cool cool all right all right so you can follow us on the instagram at you talking to me dot podcast uh we did not have a live this week or this month because the holidays are here and we will be traveling or just dealing with family and having a good time and y'all can wait y'all can wait you understand and so none of y'all want to wait none of y'all wanted to wake up the day after christmas anyway to watch our live like don't lie to us you are probably thankful so you know what get out just kidding please watch our podcast. Okay. You can also follow us on Twitter at you talking to me 11 because we're both number one and you can email us at you talking to me podcast at gmail.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the notification bell, like all our videos, leave us a little comment of what you like. Thank you to both of our mothers for always commenting and being lovely and Hannah's father every once in a while. Like we love it. Thank you. We like to know what you like and the little bits that you find interesting keeps us going keeps us going thanks moms and rate us five stars rate us positively give us all of the love on all the other podcast sites because we're on a heck of a lot of them okay like thank you we love the support we love the love um i think that's it i think so too and just in case you wanted one last little tidbit i did look up on pop sugar and they said um the wig is to make her look more quote-unquote conservative and she, when she came into set she had a chin length blonde bob that they said would not fit the look they wanted abby's hair to stand out being the blonde hair like the outsider mm. so there you have it folks interesting i can spot a wig okay <laughs> he has a superpower can't remember her name but can spot a wig we need that we need the diversity on the podcast (laughs) uh well we appreciate y'all and hope you have a good rest of this year because i guess the next time we talk to you it will be in 2022 i have a fun theme for january yeah look on instagram you'll find it there and i guess with that my name's hannah and i'm rachel And this was the You Talking to Me podcast. See you next year. (laughs) Bye. Make good choices.